Hello, 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 everybody. Welcome back to the Lozy PC, and welcome back, more importantly, to War the Pacific and the Invictus play by email game. So, it is the 11th of January, 1942. We've had some mild successes in the last couple of days, particularly in China. Uh, elsewhere, however, it has been going, you know, going slowly and we've been having some interesting uh results and some you know difficult combat um now hopefully you know things will be turning the tide and we'll be getting out there and, and hopefully causing the allies some some problems um we do have a submarine the i4 that i think is is basically screwed um it's been hit a couple of times over the last couple of days um so we'll see if that manages to make it back um it's more around seattle etc i'm not expecting it to do too much damage but you never know it might catch something going up to seattle um this is a patrol boat trying to find a submarine uh, a dutch submarine as well uh now it did hit which was good severe damage to the engines as well so again you know I, I'm, I'm happy with a, a submarine trade uh, particularly of a dutch submarine now again one hit even if it is severe damage might not be the thing that kills it but you know it's better than nothing so you know things you know we, we can we can take that um mines being swept as well um which is really good um so we are kind of prepping for our invasion of sumatra and near pamelbang and we'll need to kind of discuss and think about that issue um today now night airstrikes hopefully our betty bombers can fly from taiwan but they are saying that it's bad weather some of them stray due to night so no night raids on Cheng Ta again, which is rather frustrating. Um, so in regards to Pamelbang, as we were just mentioning, um, it is a major base that I do feel is going to be kind of heavily defended. However, I feel also at the same time, attacking it is going to be almost a surprise move. You know, it kind of feels like that isn't what Invictus would be kind of expecting as such. Um, but it is something that we do have to be careful with. Um, we've got more destroyers here doing some damage to uh, a... I think this is a US sub, the S-41. I think it's an old submarine. And some rattling, but we are also getting some damage on this as well. So, you know, we'll, we'll, you know fingers crossed. You know, we can see some damage there. Nothing major, you know. When it says taking on water, that could literally mean it is taking on, like, a, a, a valve has sprung and there's just a little bit of water, but, you know, still. Um, there's also a Dutch sub here as well. Um, again, more damage. So, actually, today, for us, the, you know, anti-submarine patrols are doing some damage, although this doesn't seem to be doing too much more. Um, so, again, doesn't necessarily mean that we're going to have you know ended the nightmare that is the submarines but it does at least kind of give us a little bit more of a hope now a lot of bad weather um so not too many missions a sweep over chang te and not really anything coming out to engage us uh, nell's flying over um malaya and betty bombers also not being followed up um not doing too much damage but doing a little bit um, so, you know, we, we can't complain too much. There's a bit of damage going on there. Um, yeah, I wonder if uh, Invictus has moved the AVG. It would make sense that he has. Um, there are some Oscars sweeping Singapore, and there are a shit ton of buffaloes here as well. This might go bad. Um, in theory, Oscars should be better than buffaloes. But obviously, just the sheer amount of uh, buffaloes here is is the worrying factor, I would say. Um, we, I have a way of dealing with this. Um, you know, no Japanese losses. Um, there we go. Uh, no Japanese losses, no Allied losses. Um, 53 lilies bombarding in the middle um, of Malaya, also doing no damage because they're too far away, I think. Um, but yeah, not, not ideal. But we do have a way of dealing with Singapore, um, which we will sort in a moment. 
Um, so yeah, so we'll have to have a think about panel bang. Um, day air strikes, we're going through this rather quick because I pressed escape uh, by accident again. Um, so it kind of rattles through. Um, it seems to, it seems that Invictus, according to our recon, is sending his troops back over the river. Um, now, it could be that these came from Nanyang. Um, it would seem a bit weird if they're going from Nanyang to Ishang via, you know, very close to me, but maybe he was kind of wondering if that was somewhere he could fight. Um, and, you know, the fact that I've noticed and reacting to it quite you know, straight away might have just made him think, mm, I'll stick over the river um, and go onto the defensive. So we will see. Now, this is a deliberate attack at Cheng Shou. This is going to be bold from us. We reduced the fortifications uh, down. Um, 2,000 Japanese casualties. Not that many destroyed. Quite a few disabled. Um, but, you know, again, not amazing. But I would say overall, not the worst. I need to make sure that we aren't just bombarding Tarakan and we're trying to capture it. Um, Simon Duval, uh, shout out to all the people who have been wa who watched the uh, streams of of this, um, clearly is holding up in Tarakan as well in this game. Um, Allied bombardment at Clark Field. This is going to be and actually that's probably the lowest it's been for a while, um, so not too much for worry. Um, but yeah, you know, it's one of those things that we do have to deal with, um, you know, Clark Field sooner rather than later, and annoyingly it's in a really good position for Invictus. We do have troops going over there, the 30th Division as well as some heavy artillery should be landing on Philippines today, so fingers crossed that they'll be there offloading and then we can move them and, and fingers crossed, you know, deal with uh, Clark Field, because once we deal with Clark Field, we'll be able to push into Bataan as well, and once Bataan's dealt with, then, you know, that's the Philippines pretty much, um, you know, free and ready to go uh, for us. Now then, what have we got here? We've got some APs, uh, and we've got a load of Air Force units. Now, where these are going to go is these are mostly going to go, there's a couple in strap move. These are going to move to the south, so what we're going to do is we're going to go to these, Dock this and load troops. Um, and we're going to move these guys to the south. Turn on. Uh, they can use anything they need. And then let us go to. Oh, let's click on that. Set destination. And uh, we want these guys to go down to Rabal. And then we can move them from there. Uh, replenish from the port. No fuel transferred. Why is there no fuel being transferred? It's a weird one. Don't know. Um, now then, what have we got going on here? We've got one of our transports here. We should have more. Um, let us set these guys. They don't have a lot of fuel themselves. We should get some support units, some uh, escorts. Uh, do we have any freebie sub chasers? Um, but we do have escorts that are going to meet these guys. Um, we have a single sub chaser there. Mm. Now, what we can do actually is form new tier. Um, what we want do you want to move anything from here from Yokosaka? No. So what we're gonna do is transfer ships to and from TF. We'll take the Yamashiro and a couple of destroyers as well. Um, and set TF routing meet task force. They can meet the transport task force and then merge with it. Um and then we can kind of leave those ships down in, in Rabal. Um and they can do some work there. Now then, here we go. Um the heavy artillery is being offloaded. Now, this is going to be the only problem, is the port size here is far too big. Uh, sorry, the ships are far, there's far too many of them for the port. So they are going to struggle to offload uh, effectively. Um, but hopefully it won't be too long for them to offload stuff. Um, we'll see how this goes. Um, and, you know, once the equipment and stuff like that is off then we can combine those and, and push into Clark Field. We do still have infantry on the way um, so we still have another you know there's 10,000 infantry there 
um, and that's frontline infantry. And how much is this going to be overall in frontline infantry? Uh, hold on, click the right one. Uh, 38th division. So, ideal TOE. I mean, it's going to be at a moment it's got 56 i think it's going to be around another 10,000 infantry so we're going to suddenly go up from currently sitting around with 13,000 infantry to about 33,000 infantry um you can see here the 48th division has got 8,000 frontline infantry um in terms of guns you know how many guns we got here 138 and again we're going to be offloading a lot more guns as well and bigger guns so Hopefully, you know, that's going to be enough to break um, Clark Field and then push on from there. Now then, something else that we need to deal with. Um, well, they should be on their way. There is a few airfield battalions here um, that do have destroyers, so it's not too much of a worry there. Um, where are our recon? There is a recon unit here. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to transfer these guys to Kuxing. Um, now, there isn't any airbase units there, which is obviously a bit of a nightmare, but I'm going to recon Pummel Bank, see if we can see if there is mines here, and just generally see what we can see. Um, because we want to work out what we're going to be like landing on. Now, we could land at Germany, I think. Um... Or we could land at Oosthaven. Um, those are kind of two options, really. So either one would be possible. Although the better option would be Palmerbank itself. But at the same time, we obviously want to make sure that we can, you know, actually succeed in our mission there. You know, we don't want to um, go and just send troops willy-nilly this is something that we've always kind of maintained is something we want to keep an eye on now then uh let us go for all nels at this base are going to be flying to singapore now this is in their extended radius which does mean that they are only going to be dropping two 250 pound bombs which is a nightmare but we're also going to set these to go at night okay um, so they're going to be night and they're going to be airfield attack. This is what we're going to use to kind of break those buffaloes. Um, we'll do a couple of nights of just nothing but um, thingy flights. Um, these guys are still on ground attack, but there's not really anything they can reach. Where is the rest of the Nels there? There we go. Um, so we're going to set these again. A couple of nights. Um, of all the planes flying um, to try and do their best at you know destroying anything that is there same as what we've been doing with the veg bombers over in china obviously they haven't actually been succeeding um kind of a big problem we have uh with japanese aircraft and lack of search radars uh right let's make tour sure we are attacking at uh Arakan, rather than kind of sitting there with our fingers up our mums um and where else do we need to go we've got our patrol going on down here um nothing too exciting at the moment um we should have some submarines now available to move um or am i being crazy no maybe i am going crazy where was it that i saw ships that were going to be available to move Um, you can oh you're not even in the ship yet right I don't know I'm just going a bit a bit loopy um, right so we do have mine layers here now uh, and we want them to lay some mines we want to build up a set of mines in uh, what you call it in rubble we're off loading supplies here now as well um and let us get i think the airfield is going to be more significant at the moment i know we can only dock 12 24,000 tons of, of shipping but we're not going to need that too much at the moment um 
Now, that can stay here. Um, transfer ships to and from. I think that was the whole point of this. So that is supposed to stay here at Rebel to provide us with um, support for our Mavises. So transfer to base. Moves them a little further down. Um, and they can carry on doing what they were doing. Although I'm going to set a few more of them to search. So I don't think enough of them were doing that. Um, okay. And then what else we got over here? Um, oh, we actually do now have an Air Force Regiment. Okay, that's good. And we should have, coming over soon... Where are they? Are they in truck? Nope. Bablanog? Yeah, there they are. The Yamadama Detachment. So transfer to base, select on map, and they should be able to... Oop, should be able to reach... Um, Ripple from there, which they can. Amazing. So now we finally have some aircraft uh, in Rabul, um to provide us with a little bit more protection, uh, which is obviously super key. Um, so yeah, that's always good. Um, so now if there is an attack on Rabul, at least he's going to, Invictus is going to find zeros here rather than anything else, which is obviously going to be a little bit more of a worry. Uh, let us secure the northern coast of uh, New Guinea, and soon we'll need to make our plans for attacking Lunga as well to capture Guadalcanal uh, to make sure we've got that. Now then, um, elsewhere, elsewhere, elsewhere. We've got a little fight going on over here, so again, deliberate attack. Um, let's see what's going on in China, shall we? Um, because this is going to be major conflict zone. Um, let us do, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm happy to do another deliberate attack. I know it was quite a few thousand casualties, but I'm quite happy to do it. Um, our recon was telling us porcupines, uh, which is never fun. Um, but I suppose that's sometimes one of those things you've got to deal with. I'm debating, do we send a 13th army over the river? Is that future objective? Um... Nanyang would be their future objective, I'd say. And we'll set all to that. Um, screw it. So, 16th Army, still... Sorry, the 13th Army, it's still unpacking most of it. Um, but we're going to want it to kind of cross into Shangzhou. Now, the only thing we've got to be careful of here is it will still do shock attacks. But, this is a big but, if we can get those fortifications down like we're doing then it shouldn't make too much of a difference um if anything it would actually benefit us um but yeah let us push into um Shengshou and then we cross the rivers and we can kind of push forward and then the next river we've got to cross is near Ishang so you know this is going to be <laughs> I think it's how many troops are we going to be committing here in terms of infantry um, so, the 116th is 7,750, so let's just round that up then to, uh, 15,000 here, then that would be 22,500, and then another 22, so that's 30,000, so it's 30,000 infantry coming from Kaifeng right now, there's 21,000 infantry there already. And these are frontline troops. These aren't, you know, backline troops either. So, you know, we, we're going to have about 50,000 troops attacking Shengzhou. Um, according to this, it's 82,000 Chinese troops. So that's going to give us a lot of infantry around the place. And to be fair, we have a lot of the 11th Army ready to go, or at least half the 11th Army ready to go, the 13th and the 3rd Division here. Um, there's also um, the 13th Army, the Independent Mixed Brigade of the 70th Division, um, and a 13th tank regiment of the 3rd Division, um, tank red tank division, also kind of supporting this near Xinjiang. Because again, the aim is to kind of keep the railways under our control, um, which does mean that we have to deal with random enemy units like that, um, that decide that they want to kind of jump across. But what we also need to be careful of is we don't want to move too much um, and cause ourselves too many problems with... Um, garrisons but that should be fine elsewhere 
think most things are going to be okay. It does seem that there is a big kind of push back. Probably heading to Rangoon from Invictus, which obviously we're going to be hopefully aiming to deal with soon enough. He claims. Um, okay, the 56th Regiment is moving back. Um, where? Okay, it's because it's moving in with some other stuff, but you see other things have moved down already. That's fine. Um, hopefully we can push on to Kuala Lumpur in the next couple of days and capture that, and then we'll be well on our way in Malaya. But other than that, I think that's most of the stuff we need to look at. Um, let's just have a look at how our research is going on. Uh, du, 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 du. The Helens are being researched. Still nothing on the Zeros or the Judies or anything like that, which always gets me a bit, a bit worried. Um, got plenty of Zeros in the pool, which is good. So that should mean that, you know, we shouldn't have any Claudes anymore. So let's just go to uh, land-based and go to the IJN. Not all types. Let's go to fighters. Um, so according to this, there is a load of Claudes. Um, this is, this is going to be the problem, is getting them to be fully upgraded um so there should be some here in saigon now these supposedly cannot upgrade all numbers are sufficient i don't want that i want to upgrade to zeros done right now yes well don't don't keep that there's no need um so more zeros okay um training claudes at yokohama is fine training claudes at nagasaki is also fine um Aminato, they are going to be staying there, so that's fine. There's a unit of truck here, which, again, don't needs to move to a bigger airbase. Uh, that's going to be the problem. It's going to be moving into a bigger airbase. Um, hmm. Okay, yeah, that's generally the issue. It's these guys over here that need moving, basically. Um... Okay, so where is going to be the biggest airbase in the region? It's probably going to be somewhere like Rabaul, isn't it? It can be. Now, we should have some construction units on the way, surely. Base force, naval construction, field, airfield construction, that's fine. Um, these guys are bringing some air transport over. Um... You shouldn't really follow, you should merge, just to make sure you're in there. Now protected. Ah, okay. I think most of this should be okay. It's just, I'm, I'll keep an eye on it, and I'll move them eventually. They're not, in the, it's not the worst situation right now, but obviously it's something we do need to keep. Keep a close watch on and make sure that we are doing well enough. How's things going over here? Port not being expanded, because we're in a strap mode. Something I keep forgetting to do is when I've moved construction regiments around, is taking them out of strategic mode. Um, because they don't do any work while they're in strategic mode. If you've taken them out of strategic mode, it's not a problem. Now, there is something else we could do. Um, something that I have seen people do, um, which is kind of fuck the level 5 airbase situation off. Okay um and kind of bomb areas going forward now that's not necessarily a terrible idea for us although we do want to keep an eye on what we're doing but what we can do for example is before the invasion of pamel bank although it's not going to be as effective we can move the betty bombers and nels that we've been flying from saigon um to kuxing or even miri to be fair miri is expanding its port at the moment, um, which is fine because you know we want to make sure that Miri's port is nice and big, um, so we can move those tankers, etc., around. Um, speaking of, it is kind of interesting that we haven't really spotted any submarines around Miri for a while. Um, let's just make sure they've got depth charges. They do, they do, they do. That's fine. Um, yeah, it's, it's kind of interesting that we've not really seen these guys 
um, a, you know, for a little while. Um, and I'm, I'm debating that what we should do is maybe start moving some fuel um, back to Japan. I know it's a little early, um, but it's never really an issue. It's, it shouldn't really be uh, something we should delay if we can help it. Now, we've got some tankers here in Camera Bay. Um, they are quite big tankers. Miri isn't the biggest base we've got at the moment. It's obviously Balak Papan is at the moment, but that's then going to be dwarfed by uh, Pamel Bank, which is going to be where we're going to be moving most of our fuel from. I think we've got some smaller tankers up here. We do. So we have some 4,000, um, some small 4,000 endurance tankers um, over here. Uh, so one, two, three, four. And that can move 5,000 tons of fuel. Again, nothing crazy, but it doesn't need to be crazy. And we've got some DMSs there that can provide them with some uh, cover and support. Um, and, you know, they can move at some, a decent speed. So set home port. Home port is going to be Miri. Um, now, how much is this? It's only 6,000 as well, so they should be able to dock quite quickly um, at Miri because now this can take... 12,000 ships with 12,000 tons of shipping with 9,000 as the maximum and then we can start offloading that so we'll probably offload it up for a cocoa or maybe even wakiyama um because wakiyama has a refinery uh so what that means is with the refinery um it offloads quicker uh is something i've learned it's a it's a weird thing about this game but if you're going to move fuel and you know supply well particularly fuel and oil you want to do it at a refinery because it moves quicker so for example uh with australia you don't really want to offload if you're playing as the allies you don't want to offload at brisbane even though you might have a load of shipping there and that's going to become kind of the main base for the allies and the americans going forward you're actually better off doing it in sydney and waiting for the rails to move it there is weirdness and strangeness in regards to moving um supplies and fuel by rail but yeah it's something that i've i've learned and even like here you don't want to take the if you can help it take the oil from say ben carlos or jambi you want to do it from pummel bang um so yeah just a couple of couple of interesting things to keep in mind so let us end it here let's just see if there's anything interesting on signal intelligence um radio transmissions detected at 8326 so that's 94.53. So what was it? 86, 20, 83.26. So 83 there. It's going to be. <laughs> okay, so 83 is there, 26 is there. Okay, so there are some radio transmissions in the Gobi Desert. Of China I not gonna lie guys that is probably one of the least useful signal intelligences that you can give me almost almost on the same level as there are heavy radio transmissions in San Francisco which does suggest to me however that there is a lot going on here uh, in San Francisco and you know what we're gonna be a bit ballsy um, I wanna I wanna do some San Francisco raiding. Um deep San Francisco raiding. Although I do want to be somewhat careful. Um Okay, these guys are heading back home. because uh, they need resupply. Okay, so we'll leave it here. So thank you very much everyone for joining us, and I will see you guys next time. Uh, do come and join us on Discord. Do hit that like and subscribe button. I know it's it's you know a cliche of YouTube at this point, but it is really important because it does help the channels grow. It does help these videos get recommended elsewhere. And also drop a comment. You know, see what you think's gonna tell me what you think is gonna happen, um, or you think is gonna happen over the next few 
in-game sessions or what you think I should do. You know, give me some some ideas. Um, but yeah, until next time, everyone, have a very, very good day. I'll see you soon. Bye.